Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of A Little Life of the Play, which opens in London this weekend on the 25th of March. I was really fortunate. I managed to get myself a ticket for the, pre uh, the second night of the preview run, which was held at the Richmond Theatre between the 14th and the 19th of March. It's now been a week since I've seen the play and I've had some time to gather my thoughts and kind of figure out how I want to review the play. Um, it's also just been really overwhelming because if you've seen my previous video, I had talked about, um, I had just read the book um, and it was only like a few days um, between finishing the book and going to see the play. So it's been an intense few weeks with when it comes to kind of a living life with a little life. <laughs> um, I had not known anything about A Little Life until they had announced the, the play. I watch a lot of plays. I'm based in London. I go to the theatre probably every week. Um, and as soon as I heard about this play that was coming and it had a stellar cast, I, I kind of dug deeper into it and I realised it was based on a book. I knew I had to read the book before I went to see the play. So it's been a really intense kind of month, I'd say, because I only discovered A Little Life maybe like five weeks ago and I've read the book and then I watched the play, which is very rare. You know, normally if you read a book, you might then watch a movie related to the book maybe like five years later. So it's been a really intense few weeks. I'm still kind of somewhat living in the world of a little life. If you read it, you'll understand what I mean. Um, and yes, I kind of wanted to summarise my thoughts and feelings about the play. So I went to see it um, about five days ago uh, on the second night at the Richmond Theatre. They did a preview run. It was a sold out show. This the entire run has been a sellout. Um which is really strange like for a play to have such demand and also the show will be running for five months over three theatres, which I've never heard of in all my life of watching plays. Um, it's just, I think they're doing like, a, I, count, I counted like 150 shows, which is just crazy because it's, you know, three hours, 35 minutes. Um, as we went to the, when we went to the theatre, um, we were given, all, we were all given these kind of, Leaflets, which talks about the runtime as a three hour and 40 minute show, including one 20 minute interval. So not, you know, normally these sorts of shows will have two intervals. Um, the first act was one hour, 50 minutes and the second act was one hour, 30 minutes. Um, I had stage seats, which I don't know how by like the grace of God, I managed to get 35 pound stage seats. I, these tickets have been going for like 150 pounds, 250 pounds, like they're just so, so in demand. I just feel so blessed to have, you know, got a ticket for one of the hottest shows in London for £35 and sitting on the stage, literally on the stage. If you see the pre if you see pictures of the preview, um, you will see a group of people sitting on the stage behind the set. There was like this much room between my legs and the set. I could, if I put took my, sort of extended my arm, I would have touched the actors and that's how close we were. Um, I have no idea why they're selling those tickets so cheap. Um, but when we we had to arrive half an hour um, earlier um, than others, I guess, um, because basically people who were sitting on the stage were taken through like backstage and they had to like lock take off, well, lock our phones in kind of these bags so we couldn't take them out during the show. Um, I managed to get a program. I think it was about seven pounds, seven pounds fifty. Um, it's 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 nice. It's got sort of like loads of pictures from kind of um, rehearsals and things like that. And talks. Uh, there's an interview with Hanya Yanikihara, the author, and um, Ivo um, as well, which is quite interesting. If if you're um, interested in having a read of that, um, there was no other merch though, which I kind of knew anyway because I think the merch is kind of going to only be available from the West End run. Unusually, the show started at seven. Um, normal shows start at seven thirty. But this one unusually starts at seven, which is, I think, because it's such a long play. I was really surprised that they hadn't split the show into two parts. The other um, shows like The Inheritance has done that quite successfully. So I was I was quite surprised when I heard about how long it was going to be, because they've also had to cut it down from a four hour sh um, play that it what, what was four hours when it ran in the Netherlands. Um, so. Um, I was quite surprised that, that they didn't do it in two parts. However, given how much demand there is for the play, it, I just don't think it would have been possible because it would have been running for a year, maybe longer, to, to get everyone who's interested in seeing it um, and over two shows. I mean, Harry Potter does it really well as well. So I thought I'd start with talking about what I really loved about the play and, yeah, just what, what were the, some of the highlights for me. And then I thought I'll talk about some of the things that 
kind of fell flat for me. And I'm no like theatre critique. I, I'm not a playwright. I'm not a novelist. So this is really just my opinion as a a viewer, someone who absolutely loved Hanya Yanagihara's work. Um, and I loved the book. And I guess like anyone who reads something and then maybe watches a film or an adaptation of it, you still have a, an opinion, right? You still have um, I, I, an idea how of how it should make you feel and how, what the reality is on how it does make you feel. So this is no kind of criticism. I'm not saying it should be done differently. This is just my opinion on, um, yeah, what I what I loved, absolutely loved about it and some of the things I thought, hmm, not sure, which I think I'm allowed. The first thing I really enjoyed about this show is the staging and I really do pay attention when I go and see plays and theatre to the staging and just seeing, seeing how directors are using kind of new technologies um, to bring the story to life. And though this one is not overcomplicated, I just thought there was really um, small elements that I felt were really true to the book. So, for example, they've got a fully functioning kitchen within um, the main set, which is being used throughout you know, the entire show to, um, where characters are cooking up entire dishes. And you get the smell and aroma from um, what they're making. So, you know, like they're making, at one point, Harold's making an entire steak um, or an entire um, eaten mess. And it just, it's like, it's happening there um, whilst everything else is going on. And then it becomes part of the narrative, which I just thought was really clever. Um, each actor, uh, each character has their own kind of bit on the stage which portrays their career, which I thought was a really clever um, way of kind of bringing the entire world um, to, you know, kind of within one space, which each character can go into whilst there is something going on um, on the main stage. So I thought those kind of elements were really clever. There was a lot of other kind of stage tricks, which I wasn't that overly impressed with, which I'll talk about um, towards uh, the end of this uh, video. There wasn't an entire orchestra, but what there was was these four amazing violinists and celloists, which um, were playing bits of uh, music throughout the entire play, which just added um, and elevated the show, I felt. It was um, at moments when things got really sinister, they kind of were playing very kind of, you know, sinister music, which kind of added really good effect for the entire show. Um, so I just thought, you know, having that really kind of slimmed down, you know, um, orchestra was a really interesting way of doing things. Um, there was other music that was running um, throughout the show, which was just like audio. Um, but I just felt like these four um, violins were very, very good. And it was just, yeah, it, it, it also added that element of kind of class and sophistication um, that we know to be true within the book where Jude and Harold kind of are really into their music and you know Jude's a good pianist so I felt it brought, felt brought that kind of classical music feel to the story so the main four actors are absolutely fantastic I think James Norton has done a really good job of in, of kind of really getting into the head of Jude and he does I, I for me he I know there's been you know sort of other talks about you know him not being the right um, person for the job but I really felt that when I saw him I saw Jude um I just, I, he's kind of really got it down to a T. I think his kind of mannerisms and um, just the, his, his his costume and everything, his his makeup was just done so well to kind of represent what I feel Jude is um, and what, what what Jude looks like in my um, head. Um, Luke Thompson, also a really good actor. And I felt the chemistry between um, Luke and James, which is, you know, Jude and Willem, was just really good they have this kind of real kind of intense uh, dynamic that kind of builds throughout the show and and there's some really intense moments where you know they're very close you know some sex scenes and things like that which i felt were which were very believable i really liked amari as um jb i felt that he really brought JB to life and that kind of arrogance that JB has that kind of you know very artistic flair that JB carries I thought Omari was really good um Malcolm was the guy that plays Malcolm was interesting I don't know if Malcolm has a really big role within the play uh there isn't there are, you know even though he's part of the narrative um and it, it, it he was needed for the play I don't know how much he adds um so yeah, but again, I think all four characters were really fantastic and the casting for this show has been really, really um, 
really good, um, which I think has also added to the buzz of it. Another thing I really loved, which I missed in the book, was the um, the character of Anna. Now, I know she plays, she's not a huge part of the book, and I kind of, like, I did miss how important she was to in Jude's life when I was reading the book, um, but she's really brought into the forefront um, in the play, so she's a main character within the play. They've dropped Julia, which I thought was... I, I like Julia in the book, even though she's not, you know, a main character. But I just thought that presence of that female presence of Julia for the support to Harold, I thought was really important in the book. But so therefore, Harold doesn't have that in the play, which I felt lost context a little bit. Um, but maybe that's just me kind of um, overthinking things. But the, the idea of bringing Anna in, I thought was amazing. And she almost plays um, Jude, the, the person that's kind of living out Jude's thoughts and and is talking to Jude but in his head throughout the the play where if Jude's kind of thinking out loud or kind of you know self deprivating within his own head uh, Anna's there kind of being his like kind of either support system cheerleader or kind of encouraging him you know the moments when um, the character of Anna come, the actress comes on stage and she's kind of there saying to Jude, you know, you need to talk about this, you need to talk about this. And we all know that blood and gore was going to be a really big part of um, the show. And I think the prosthetics team have done an absolutely stellar job at this. I didn't know before going in how this was going to be kind of portrayed and how they were going to be able to pull this off. But how they are able to continue that self-harm process um, for three and a half hours, I just thought was phenomenal. Um, there are moments where it does really get bloody and and you know, a lot of people were turning away because they couldn't physically watch it. Um, a friend of mine wasn't who who came with me wasn't able to watch directly watch it at all. And there were moments where I had to look away as well. And the funny thing is, when we were looking away, we were looking at the audience. Um, so you actually looking at the reaction of the audience to what was going on uh, on stage, which was really fascinating. Um, but I just the way they kind of built these layers and layers and layers of prosthetics over Jude's arm for the self-harm moments I just thought was really really impressive um and also just kind of uh, the the damaging of his body when you know you can see when he he got naked which I just thought was really genius you know very very creative team um so that was yeah it's a big part of the story right so I just thought it was so well done another character I really enjoyed was seeing Elliot Cohen who plays the bad guys, so that's brother Luke, Caleb, and Dr. Trailer. I thought it was a really genius move uh, on the director's part for um, encapsulating all three sort of bad characters into one actor, which made it easier, I think, if you've not read the book, to really, um, gr for, as an audience member, to grasp the fact that this is a really negative um, influence on Jude's life. And... I just, yeah, he was just so good at um, switching roles and very easily moving from one character to the other. I just thought he was, it was a really, really fantastic portrayal of those um, three characters, which are big parts of the play and, and the story. And apart from Jude, the other character I absolutely loved in the show was the actor um, who plays Harold. I thought he depicted Harold so greatly, just so warm and so loving and caring and kind and genuine he just oozed this warmth um the, he does this amazing monologue at the end um which i just felt just wrapped up the whole show so well i think that really if you know if you really listen to into the words i mean we know in the book that you know he, harold ends with this um almost talking to willem and you know in the same way in at the end of the show he's kind of almost talking to the audience and it was just yeah it was just such a poignant moment where everyone's just so focused on what he's saying and you know he talks about the fact that you know he, he's really sad that Jude died feeling the need to apologize you know which was it is, is a big part of the end of the book and so I just yeah he's just throughout the whole show from start to finish he was just such such a easy character to watch and listen to and kind of almost fall in love with so um yeah he's he's absolutely fantastic so now moving on to the things i didn't like so much um so i felt generally the the pace of the show was just so fast i mean i understand it's a lot to get in to one um play like you know in, to be able to narrate the entire um contents of Hanya's work it will is never going to be possible right but so even though i think it was really well executed i just felt 
the whole thing was just rushed. It was just, it was, there was no moment really to breathe. I mean, there was a couple of moments where you could stop as an audience member and just kind of, okay, like do that. But if you didn't know, you know, if you've not read the book, I think it was really hard to follow. So therefore the pacing of it was, there was no, it was just really, really fast. A lot going on all the time. Characters in, characters off. There was never a moment, I think, when Jude wasn't on the stage. Um, and, you know, some of the, you know, a lot of the characters were constantly on the stage. So it was a, it was an overload. And, uh, you know, moments I kept turning to my friends saying, do you understand what's happening? Like, you know, even in interval, I felt the need to kind of, you know, explain because... It was just so intense. Um, and I think it was always going to be that way. But yeah, um, if I hadn't have read the book, I think I'd have been a little bit lost. I, if I'd also gone in not having read the book, I think I would have struggled as an audience member to sort of comprehend the the point of the story. Like, I think as when you read the book, you have days, you know, or during whilst, whilst you're reading to kind of analyse the contents and kind of the characters and emotions and really get your head around it. Um, and yeah, just I, it just felt that it just the, it never stopped. So it was it was overwhelming, and and I hope that you know um, people do grasp the 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 context and the contents of of the story. But yeah, I think I would have struggled if I hadn't read the book. On a similar note, I think I mean this is always going to be the case, isn't it? That the movie never lives up to the book. So in this case. The play doesn't live up to the book. It really is an adaptation. I f but I feel that someone might watching someone watching the play without having read the book might think, "What the hell? Like, why was this necessary?" And I think, you know, when you're reading, there's so much nuance and so much depth to the story, the characters. You know, little things like talking about, you know, the movies that Willem was doing, or the, um, you know, the kind of music that Jude was listening to, or just moments between Harold and Jude. Um, that I felt were quite lost within the play. Um, and and look, like, I know you're never going to get all that detail in, but I think as a story, it felt really harsh on stage. It just felt very brutal. Um, whereas we know there's some light in the book. You know, there is there is a lot of love in the book. Um, and if I'm being, being very honest, like I think the entire theme of the play is love. And we know that that's a strong part of it. You know, all this love that Jude received despite all his past. But I know like that isn't the only part of the story. That's not the only beautiful thing in the story. There's so many other elements of the book that are so beautiful, which I, it doesn't make it, it doesn't translate onto the stage. I don't think so. Another thing I didn't like so much was Andy's character um, that was portrayed um, on stage. I felt I felt in the book, you know, there's, there's several... Um, conversations between Jude and Andy which then develops as we know into this beautiful relationship that they have where you know Andy is this real confidant um, and no matter what Jude turns up to his surgery in you know whichever state he turns up to um, and no matter how frustrated Andy gets he's constantly there to patch him up and you know sort of make him feel better to some degree right and yeah I just felt that on stage the only time they kind of kept bringing ha um, Andy in was to patch Jude up, but it was kind of silent. There was not much real conversation or Andy's lines would be things like, you know, I don't understand Jude. Why do you keep doing this to, to yourself? Why do you keep doing this to yourself? And it just felt slightly forced. It felt slightly animated. It didn't really feel authentic in Andy's frustration because we don't know, you know, the history, like it's not told um on stage so like yeah i just felt that th that was slightly lost and on a similar note as much as i loved the bringing anna in into the story on stage i felt that at times she was slightly comical and some of her lines were slightly you know like you can do this jude you could do this you know and you're like i don't know like it's, it's a little bit more serious than that you know um so i don't i just felt I don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how, I mean, again, I'm not a director. I don't know what I would have changed, but there were just moments I felt it felt slightly inauthentic and it kind of felt like cringe. Um, but I love, I love the character of Anna generally within the play. Um, I, the other thing I was really disappointed with was the way they kill Willem off. So I was waiting for this moment. And I thought, oh my God, it's going to be this real kind of like emotional 
um, moment where everyone's going to like gasp because I know in the book it's kind of probably the first time I properly cried when I was reading um, and the way they kind of brought it to an end I felt was a bit cowardish so um, yeah like basically he uh, Willem's like narrating the car crash that's about to happen or is happening and whilst that process is, and, and there's this moment where he's like and the and the truck hits me woo, and he goes woo and I felt well, did he just like say woo like you know where is where was that kind of climax like where was where was the like that explosion of emotion like it just and I think they downplayed it a little bit. And then he goes on to talk, uh, tell the audience about the fact that he sees Jude, but that wasn't, and everyone thinks, oh yeah, of course. And then that's not the, that's, and I thought maybe they're going to cut um, the bit about his brother out. But then he goes on to say, but that's not the last thing I saw. The last thing I saw was um, my brother. And, I, and he goes on to explain that he had a brother that died many years ago. And was that the reason he loved Jude the way he did is because he kind of saw his brother in Jude a little bit but I felt that it was the wrong time to bring that in like they should have kind of done that you know an hour before where the, the audience had that context already so when they were portraying Willem's death it wasn't you didn't lose the emotion of the audience like you didn't break that that impact and that climax which I felt him starting to tell the story about his younger brother as important as it is, it kind of did ruin that moment. And so that for me was just a complete letdown. Another thing I really disliked was the way they killed Jude off. So <sighs> there's this moment after Willem's death, obviously it, they portray, they kind of fast forward these few, you know, few years that they're talking about the state Jude's in and, you know, um, and it's kind of all from Harrod's, Harold's perspective. And all of a sudden this this Jude and Harold are on stage and this huge kind of like four-sided screen comes down and it covers Jude and Harold and then it goes up again and Jude's no longer there. So I'm assuming he's kind of sitting on a platform of some sort that came down and goes up again. And it just felt so clunky and so heavy and so like... I understand what they were trying to do. Like one minute he's there and next minute he's not. And, you know, he's dead, right? It just, it lost again that climax, that emotional, that point where you just wanted to break down as a as an audience member. And I don't understand it. I did not understand it. Again, maybe because I was sitting up from the back it looks different to when you're sitting in in, in the stalls. Um, I don't know. Like, maybe if you've seen it, you can comment um, and let me know. But, yeah, I just felt that it was just very... It was all too heavy and clunky and unnecessary. Like, they could have done something much, much more smarter, um, a lot more delicate in the way they removed Jude off the stage. So that, for me, was you know, again, a big moment in the show, right, in, in the story, and I just felt it was lost. Um, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't enjoy that at all. So there's a lot there. Um, my final thoughts are, as a whole, I, I think as an adaptation, it's working really well. I think it's 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 going to do well. I hope all, all audience members, whether you read the book or not, appreciate the story for what it is and are able to take something away from it, if not a beautiful... Um, you know, piece of work from amazing actors who are just fantastic. The fact that they're going to do this night after night after night for five months, I just do not, I can't comprehend the strength it's going to take for them to do that. And, you know, for their their loved ones as well, who aren't, who they're hardly going to be around, right? Um, so they're going to be on stage every night, probably like, I think five times, a, five times a week or six times a week, some nights. Um, and yeah, I just I have so much admiration for them. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed seeing it all come to life. I am actually going to go watch it again. Um, my flatmate has a spare ticket. Um, so I'm looking forward to sitting in the stalls and seeing it from the other direction. Um, I might even try and get some last minute tickets um, between now and the end of the run, just because I feel it's something I want to revisit a few times. I'm so fortunate to have it kind of on my doorstep. Um, so overall, I did really love it. Um, 
it was never going to be the book and I knew that and I'm not expecting it to be that. I, I don't actually even think it takes away from the experience one has with the book um, and I just I just hope people love it and then go on to read the book because I just think it's still such an amazing thing to you know do after you whether you see the play first or see it after you read it I just yeah I think that I mean I went into I actually went into Waterstones yesterday to buy a copy for a friend and it was completely sold out so I'm not surprised um I don't know. I like. I don't know where it's going to go after this. Um, you know, maybe it will go to New York or another, um, you know, city. But um, I, I hope that this kind of legacy lives on for some reason because I feel like the characters will always stay with me forever. Um, I'll probably revisit the book in a year's time. Um, yeah, like it just felt really cathartic, and like I felt like it, it kind of completed my my the whole experience of what the a little life has been for me and you know I ended up spending you know good hour after the show talking to my friend who hadn't read the book but just I just had to but not that he asked for I had to fill him on so much context about you know um things that I wanted him to know just because it would have enriched his experience of the story um but overall I loved it I think it's one of the best things um, that's ever come to London um we have we're so blessed to have so many great shows it's definitely up there um, and we're really fortunate so that we're getting a lot of shows that have got amazing, you know, celebrity and non-celebrity actors. So if you are going to see it, um, please let me know what you think in the comments. Um, there's so many spoilers in this. So if you've made it this far, I hope it's not, you know, ruined it for you, but, um, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think. If you agree with some of what I've said, or if you disagree, let me know. Let's talk about it because I can't stop talking about this. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and making it this far. And I shall see you in my next video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd love to. Uh, yeah, that would be amazing. Thank you so much.